We're still on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Thank you for joining us and also thank you for staying with us. Now, most businesses and homes were again left out without power supply for several hours yesterday after Niger's national grid collapsed uh, for the eighth time in 2022. The electricity distribution company, the discos had earlier in the day notified their customers of the disruption in power supply. The national grid had collapsed eight times in 2022. The last incident was in July. It collapsed once in June and twice in March and April 2022 as well. Uh, the electricity grid suffered more than 200 partial and total system collapse from January 2010 to June 2022. Niger's national grid is known for experience and disruption. Uh, it collapsed in February, May, July, and August 2021. According to reports, the grid experienced 206 collapses between 2010 and 2019. Uh, verifiable data shows that Nigeria witnessed 146 total collapse of the national grid and 73 partial collapse between the period. We have a guest in the studio this morning, O'Neill uh, Lajuwomi, uh, who is the CEO of Wavelength Integrated Power Services Limited. Thank you for joining us again. I mean, it feels like we get to talk to you every other time the grid yeah. collapses. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, okay, it is. so what are your thoughts this time? It's the eighth time. Uh, well, I think the last time I was here, I told you we're not... We're never going to see the end of this until the right things have been done. And again, it's happened again. I was a bit reluctant coming on to show, just like yourself. But we have to keep talking about these things, isn't it? And I must thank you guys for at least trying to talk about real issues in the in the sector. Okay, so so what, you talked about the right things being done. Yeah. And we can ne never get out of this. So what exactly are we not doing? The problem right. is, um, I mean, it's met, there are actually many problems, um, starting from lack of investment or slow investment in the sector. There are a few things that should have been done and has not yet been done. Um, so therefore, there are going to be a lot of collapse. We're still going to witness some this year. I, I can assure you that. So I think that's, that's a major factor. Well, you, you, I, I want you to begin to, I mean, you have talked about we not doing the right thing, a yeah. few things not being done. Can yeah. you categorically tell us the sure. things that we're not doing, the things that should be done? Yeah. And the things that we're not getting right. All right, so I'll tell you something. Like the, the grid, the national grid is actually um, doesn't have a, a scatter system. That's a supervisory control and data acquisition system that controls the systems automatically, balances the system. Right now in Nigeria, our grid is still done manually from uh, the control center in Oshobo. So we don't even know what the problem is. I mean, the TCN doesn't know what could have tripped the, um, the, the grid or neither will the disco. But if you have a SCADA system, then you can have all this real-time control. That's one. Second, you should have a spinning reserve. Um, international best practice suggests that every grid must have at least 10% spinning reserve. In Nigeria, we don't have a spinning reserve. Last time I remember, NERC was discussing what, uh, procuring a spinning reserve. Now, let me explain what a spinning reserve is. Spinning reserve means that you have a reserve of power generation that comes online if there's a load imbalance. As of this morning, we've been able to find out what the problem is. Try yesterday, a lot of people didn't know what the problem including the, the power operators. So it's a real issue. They're, 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 we're talking about SCADA systems needs to be rightly procured right now. And what, what is a SCADA system? system? Supervisory controlled data acquisition system. What was that? Well, it controls the, the power, the grid automatically, rather than the manual, manual way we do do things. And it acquires data. It tells you where the infrequency, um, the load uh, infrequency has occurred, or uh, what could have triggered the, okay, the so um, you can, power. You can see everything on the screen. Exactly. Just like it. you have in Egypt. Yes. Where <laughs> one man went to look at sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so you're saying that we, we didn't know what the issues were, but now we know. As of this morning, so yes, we have an idea of what it is, not fully. What, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is it? It was a load in frequency, so that's a load imbalance in the system. Okay. There are several from, factors that can cause it. From which part problem. of the country, so we know who to blame? I, I really do not know now, it's <laughs> funny time. <laughs> All right. You talk about spinning reserve, what is that? Yeah. A spinning reserve is a backup power, really. Like you have a generation constantly going on in the background that comes in when there's an, um, a, a drop in the, in the load supply. Uh, but we don't have that at the moment in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we've heard over the time that... Uh, it's not a problem of 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 um, generation. 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 Yeah. It's rather a problem of capacity to transmit yeah. the power generated. How true is that? Yeah, I mean, so that's that's also an issue. Like, I mean, you still have some obsolete um, lines in the in the transmission uh, um, TCN uh, uh, ancillaries, and therefore, without constant upgrade, you're going to keep having trips in the in the load supply. So that's that's a real issue as well. So. 
I, I, because I mean, you you you, you um, followed the, through with the statistics and all of the figures yeah. that you know was put out right, yeah. and uh, you're saying that we can never get out of this. Yeah. I mean, we, we wouldn't, I, I, and I assure you that until the right things have been done, and, and this is not even just me saying it, even TCN has actually acknowledged as far back as 2019. So without the, without a spinning reserve, without a scalar system, you, you're going to keep having the same thing. Even this was even affirmed by the uh, ED of uh, the Nigeria Data Power yesterday. So a lot of the players in the sector know these things. And, I, and of course, unfortunately, Nigeria is a place where we are, I mean, we have smart people that know what to do, but unfortunately, the right things are not being done at the right time. So until we have the right things done. So, so why are we not doing it? Is it because we're not aware of the situation? We don't understand the issue? Uh, what, do you, what, what do you think that the problem lies here? Honestly, I, see, I had to have a deep breath. I, I, I really do not know why the government is not pushing on this. I don't work with the NERC or the TCN. I know there's been a discussion around procuring of the spinning reserves. Uh, the scalar systems, I do not know why it's not being procured yet. There may be real issues within the government. I don't know, maybe, uh, there's a lot of funding that's already gone to the power sector. And by now, we shouldn't be talking about these things. It should have been resolved. So, but how come we, we got to the point where in 2013, we talked about privatization. Yeah. We said, you know, I mean, we're experiencing partial privatization because we felt like government is not yeah. efficient in, you know, managing this. And so we needed the private sector. So was that really necessary? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I was necessary to drive investment into the sector. I think it was privatized that I can tell you some few discos are doing very well now. Uh, Ikeja and, and um, Eko Disco are doing quite well. And uh, some, some discos have actually been taken, taken back by the government, you know. Uh, but without, uh, I'm, I'm for privatization to a very large extent because that way you can actually um, bring in more investment uh, into the sector. But yeah, we're going to see improvement as, as we keep uh, pounding the issues and trying to brainstorm the issues. Uh, these are the best things we can keep doing. And, uh, and one thing also is to have the right people in, in places, uh, the right um, uh, people who have the knowledge to at least provide solutions to, to these problems. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, uh, we do not, uh, sometimes we, we put uh, um, square pegs in round holes. Mm. All right, so, so, so we, we, ha we have a situation where, you know, we, we're talking about power uh, generation and power transmission. Yeah. Um, in terms of power generation, you're agreeing with those who are saying that it's not about not having enough electricity per se, but about the transmission. Um, last it, it, two, three years ago in 2019, Nigeria signed an agreement with uh, Siemens yeah. to uh, uh, generate an additional 11,000 megawatts by 2023. Yeah. So that's still on board. But this year, we told that Nigeria signed an agreement with France to improve uh, not just electricity supply, but actually to improve uh, uh, power transmission sure. in the country worth about 25 million euros. Um, that obviously would not be taking effect as soon as possible, yeah. uh, immediately rather, but um, it, they expect that it to happen over the years. Um, so, so do you believe that this, this, we don't have any other thing to complain about? We just have to wait for that 25 million euros to be spent by the French Development Agency and the Nigerian government to expand the transmission. That, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that figure is, is very conservative. That's pri pri privatization or no privatization? Yeah, 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 25 million euros is quite conservative. I, I think we need way more than that. But yeah. at least, at, well, uh, that should help to a very large extent. But we do, the, the transmission and the generation of Nigeria needs way more than that. But of course, yeah, we only have to wait for now. No, but you, you, you have talked about having investment, I mean, the essence of uh, privatization sure. at the end of the day. But shouldn't this um, investment or having uh, the private sector come in cater for the current issues that we're faced with yeah. while we still experience Yeah, it? just like Ophelia mentioned, I mean, we, the, the funds that we're getting in now from France and, and the investment from Germany is to actually boost and, and kind of um, make the grid more robust. Some part is going to generation and into transmission. So yeah, that, that's a, that's what you see in privatization. It's not going into the to the government pockets directly. It's going to be invested into these private sector driven companies. So um, I, I mean, I'm really worried because we're talking about the power sector here, sure. and the power sector uh, is very critical for the development of the country. Very correct. Yeah. It cuts across everything. Sure. I think that if we solve the power issues, maybe we will become more productive. I agree. As a country, totally. yeah. but. Um, do you think that we really identified the issue? Like, because if we decided to put privatization as, you know, solution, we, we think that we needed, you know, the private sector to come in. Uh, was that really the right thing to do? Or rather think about, you know, 
the fact that we needed a robust uh, kind of system. Maybe privatization wouldn't have been the thing at the front burner. Uh, well, I mean, solving a problem, you have to try different things sometimes, right? Uh, privatization is one of the ways that we could have resolved this, and, and, and it's the way the government had thought it was right to do this. Um, I, I think it, it should work. Privatization works if it's done correctly, if, if the players in the sector are, you know, are, are doing, pulling their weights and doing the right thing. Unfortunately, we all know the story of privatization. Here we are. Some have been taken back, like I rightfully said. Some have, you know, if we saw they're in court and here and there. So, yeah, some, but some, some of them, will, some of the companies are still doing very well. And they really picked up themselves. All right. So but right now, we, we've seen sort of a, um, uh, uh, people have said we have an uptick in the power supply in the country. Sure. Some people have said, you know, they're experiencing better improved power yeah. supply. Um, some have given reasons about this, saying it's uh, because of the rainfall. Yeah. Is this really true? Yes, correct. I mean, we, the Nigerian uh, power sector is largely driven by um, gas and uh, hydropower. So when we have a, rainy, a rain, high rainfall, the, the, the dams are filled and the hydropower is, is working at optimal level. Amazing. We have gas, uh, gas supply as well. Uh, and if we have gas, the power is on. But unfortunately, some of also this natural, nat national grid collapse occur due to uh, gas so uh, shortage, which was, I think, was the last one I was here. That was the reason. But this time around, it's a different reason. So some, some people said the ones that started, la that came out were probably last year, that um, it was due to the diesel, you know, price increase, the cost <laughs> increase in the cost of diesel, and that yeah. those who were, you know, in charge of some aspect of the generation, yeah, uh, were going behind to actually not do what they were collecting the money for, were using gigantic generators powered by diesel to to so to generate the power, and when the cost went up, it affected uh, the ability to do that. It was off the books, you know, it wasn't meant to be, and that's why. You had uh, initial grid collapse. Is that true? Do you know anything? I, I don't have that um, information. information, but okay. Um, okay. yeah, I don't have that information at all. No. Right. Thank all right. you. All right. Well, um, so moving forward now, and I mean, some people have said that, uh, you know, with the issue of collection, so you have generation transmission at the end of the day, uh, there's also another quest where people are not paying for, you know, the services that they probably enjoy. And on the front burner, the government is responsible. When I say the government, you have government agencies have been pointed at different times of not, you know, uh, living yeah. up to her expectation. Yeah. We also have issues of uh, those who were, were supplying to, I mean, outside of Nigeria, owing sure. debts and sure. all of that. So uh, how do we, you know, resolve all of these issues to ensure that the private sector, I mean, the power sector thrives and... Yeah, yes, I, where she should I, I think you're, you're, you're actually, you're very correct. Uh, there's a real insolvency issue in, in the power sector. That's another topic, and uh, we can talk about that. We won't get out of here today. Um, we've had counter accusations, the military, the power statiles, owing the discos, and the discos owing the um, TCN. TCN and um, you see the, the, generation, the generation companies or in the gas company. So it's, a, it's really a, a quagmire we find ourselves in, and this is a real, is a real time issue. Th does that um, affect you know, the collapse of the national It does affect, it does affect, because um, if, if you're not paying your, your gas um, charges, the gas operator can decide not to supply, and then they, they, they have inefficiency in their, in their operations. It does, it's a, it's a ripple effect, really. So, do, so does, this, does this therefore not, you know, uh, you know, tell us that it's not really a problem of, of privatization? Okay. We look, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. Because we look, we look at from the unbundling of PHED. Yeah. Oh, sorry, of uh, PHCN. Sorry, yeah. uh, PHED gave me a lot of woes. Uh, so <laughs> that's why I had to go back there. From the days of the unbundling of PHCN, yeah, it's interesting, yeah. the distribution companies are private companies. Sure. And most of them are performing abysmally. Yeah, I abysmally. agree. Abysmally. Most of them. Um, the, the gas companies are private owned. You know, yeah. you look at Alpha and Power Plant, all these companies around, yeah. so the generation companies, you know, are, are privately, privately owned. Yeah. Um, you, what you have is a transmission company in Nigeria, which is, though it's run like a company, a, 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 you know, limited liability company, but it's the, the, the CEO is here. Yeah, yeah. So be, this is probably because of national security, yeah. you know, because of national security. Um, is this so? Is it really a problem of privatization? With with, with the um, trans the distribution companies as a case study. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you're trying to let me trying to uh, 
Put me on the spot. Put me on the spot right here. But yeah, I've said this numerous times. Uh, the position at the beginning was actually faulty. We all know that. We can see the results. Of all yeah, I said this as far as 2013. Yeah. And it's, we can see where we are now. And you truly, quite a number of them have, have performed abysmally. They've been taken back. So, prioritization, could it, could, it been a, uh, could, it, could it have been a solution? It could have been a solution, but uh, did, it, did it play out right? It didn't play out right. Uh, was it done rightly? It wasn't done rightly, and that's why we're here. So maybe we start to have to look at it all over again and see where we are. Look, look at privatization all over again? I mean, the some process. of the companies, the process, some of the companies are being, are being taken back. No, no, back. because, I mean, from very your very conversation, very we're really having, and I like the fact that we're keeping it very real. You know, we're talking sure. about practical issues here. So if, if, if you know, at once upon a time, we thought that we needed the private sector to come in, we needed investment and all of yeah. that, and now we're having issues where national, the national grid is collapsing. Yeah. Shouldn't privatization, uh, you know, the fact that we had privatized, uh, this would have actually also factored in the issues that we're facing right now. We shouldn't have been here. Yeah. So if privatization was the solution, then privatization should have catered for uh, some of the issues that you have mentioned, that yeah. we don't have a robust equipment, you know, and what have you. And that's why we're having the national grid that's collapsing. It's one on the other hand. The issue that we're not even generating, uh, you know, enough. We're not generating enough, to... Yeah. Uh, the, the capacity, I mean, yeah. the, the capacity that, you know, the power plants are meant to generate, we're not yeah. living up to expectation. Sure. Yeah. It's also another issue. So I'm, I'm wondering why privatization had not, have not solved these problems, because these problems are here. So should we have said that privatization is the solution? Why did we, you know, just move on to say, hey, we needed to privatize the sector when we have all these other issues? Yeah, I, I think for me, I, I still stand aware, I am, like privatization is one way to solve um, problems of uh, insolvency and drive investments uh, in real sectors. As you can see in Western world, most of the power sectors, I mean, the power sector is privatized. Like for example, in the United Kingdom, it's privatized, fully privatized. Um, and uh, US and other entities, their own state. So do we need a power. total privatization of the sector? I totally agree with you, yes. Like the TCN, for example, is still not privatized. It's, it's still owned by government. Uh, so, and you can't have that. And that's the real issue now. It's not even a disco. It's not even so many disco that are on, performing well. The discos have to, they have to rely on the TCN to, to have their supply, and, and therefore it's a, it's a real issue. Uh, Prioritization, was it done rightly? That's another right. question. For so so we're looking at um, uh, probably uh, uh, making a case for, because of course the federal government since 2005 with the power sector reforms, having you know, prioritized the distribution assets and the generation. You are saying making a case for sort of a, 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 a Maybe decentralization. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Total decentralization of the grid. I've been an advocate for that, and I'm uh, still, I'm still, I, I, I am, I'm still a full advocate of that. There are a lot of there are some areas in Nigeria right now enjoying 24 hours of power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, 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 I think that he's rural he's communities. I'm talking about rural communities oh, with okay. uh, the decentralized. They're out of the grid. They have their own uh, grid controlled by uh, renewable so energy systems. Upgrade systems. Yeah, upgrade systems. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. takes me to the point uh, sure. that the federal government recently gave 37 firms uh, licenses to produce power. Sure. Yes. Um, so do you think these are some of the, uh, the, the initiatives that will help the situation? So yeah. That's bypassing the, um, the, grid. the national grid. Yes. Uh, a classic example is, for instance, when some state governments were not aware of how, or being oblivious seemingly to how the uh, power sector is structured in terms of what is on the exclusive list and the uh, re you know recurrent uh, or concurrent list this, yeah. went ahead to to you know to again the power projects. So, yeah, for yeah. instance, River State yeah. got invested in in Afam uh, power projects yes. yeah. and only to say, oh, we can, we cannot you know give ourselves power. It has to now move from Port Harcourt to the national, national grid somewhere I mean, yeah. in Niger State, or I don't know where it is, to now to, go to, around. Uh, oh, yeah. So you are saying that the, the state should be allowed to. <laughs> Produce that power, yeah, and then share it around to the, themselves. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that is happening now as well. That's happening now. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, okay. looking into it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. We need to go now. Thank you so thank you, much Kofi. for thank your you, thank uh, you. large warming for being for having me. the show. Uh, we you. have been speaking with him. He's the CEO, Wavelength Integrated Li uh, Power Services Limited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate your time. I, I really don't know if we're ever going to get to the end of always having to talk about you know the collapse of the national grid. We have a few more months just before 2023. Maybe, just maybe, we might also have another collapse uh, you know, in <laughs> October uh, and the remaining parts of 2022. But fingers across. And we hope that the relevant quarters are taking you know, the right action 
and are stepping up to ensuring that you know the power sector is improved totally. Well, that's the size of our conversation on the breakfast. If you missed out on any part of it, it would be great and all right to follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko, and thanks for watching. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Thank you very much for your time. We'll return tomorrow.